One third, maybe a little bit more, of the people in our center will go to the funeral rooms. Some places is much more. Definitely. Okay. I don't need to have one to see that. I know the scriptures, so I can look at the actions, and I can see how they operate. When I watch people's outer actions, I basically know their minds, and how they operate, what they do, how aware they are, how they move, how they talk, what their focus, their clarity. I can tell you basically how their mind is, and what their level is. In this room, I can point to people who are going to go to three lower rounds, very clearly. And you know what? If you ask someone with power, once you have with clairvoyance or one of the armed protectors who takes strengths, they will not say I'm wrong. I guarantee you. That's how accurate I am in knowing the scriptures and looking at the person. Just like someone who knows cars very well, when they go look at cars, they know which is where. They, they just open the hood and say, oh, yeah, yeah. Why is that? Because they train themselves for years. Train themselves. So it's like they have their points. It's like, oh, they open the room, they say, oh, no. They come to each other like that, like that, like that, and you listen to wow, how'd you know that? How'd you know that? How'd you know that? How'd you know that? Wow! Teach me the trick here and say, you know, what do you say? You know, I've got some powers. And, uh, my psychic tells you that blah, 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 the carburetor's off, whatever. But they know because it's so quick, they've seen it. So some, some llamas, they trick you and pretend they have clairvoyance because they're very quick and sharp. So they, it looks like clairvoyance. So they tell you things like that, like I say, oh God, he's so uncanny. You know, he calls me right at the right time, he does this at the right time, he does, he does, he does everything just like, wow. And like, you know what? Maybe Tevin is actually Muho. Maybe he's tripping Jumba number two. You, 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 you think that, maybe he's enlightened. But you know what? If you know the scriptures well, it's like the car salesman who look at an engine, just like, it's like the lights. I can look at a person hanging around with them, talk to them for a little while. I know what's going to happen to them. Oh, I know. Do not think it's a joke when I tell you that five to six people in this room will go to three or less. Do not underestimate And the rest of you don't think, who, 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 because the rest of you may take rebirth from the human realm. Don't think it will be a pleasant rebirth. There will be very few of us in this group who actually take another report in a better place. I promise you. Very few. You can even take three work in horrible places on this time. Horrible. You can enjoy yourselves now. You can be as nasty as you want. You can be as nice as you want. You can be as hypocritical as you want. You can keep holding yourselves and holding who you really are. Live it up for a little while. Be happy for a little while. Every single day you live will be one day closer to that next existence. Trust me, if in your previous lives you had seen this existence, you would have been scared. You would have been scared. Don't think what you have right now is fabulous. It's not. It's not fabulous. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. The quick part about our existence is that our suffering is to the point where we can still rise above it a little bit for a short time to do Dharma work, the Dharma actions. So my point is this, is, don't sit there comfortable with your jewelry, in your house, in your veins, in your wife, in your husband. Don't. Time is of the essence for some of us. Time is of the essence. You may think, oh, well, I'm young. You're young, but the people you love are not. Time is of the essence. Many of us will take negative rebirths. And you think, well, why like that? Then what are you doing, Ruchi? Well, this one kept his arm, Ruchi, before Yamakapa teaching told us. He told us this. I give you Yamakapa not because I expect you to be mine. Oh, he's very direct. I give you Yamakapa because most of you go to the hell realms. She said hell realms. But when you come out, you have we have the infants of Yamakata in mind. So during the age of Makreya, it will open. Imagine the age of Makreya, you know how many Aeon fell that away? They always have a pair of couple of Chiranti Vacha Sibu. Sibu. When the great Makreya appears, hopefully you will come open his own side. He can't take it. He didn't give us initiation, hoping we'll do something now, because he looked at us. 
Oh no, don't shake your head. Shake it to yourself. Shake it to yourself. Each time you're selfish and you don't want to get money and help. Each time. And even when you don't get asked and you say no or yes, doesn't matter. Just having that mind, I will not give, I will not give, I will not give. We're creating positive peace for the people of us. Just living well. Even nobody asks you, can you give me some money? Can you give me some food? Can you give me a house? Can you give me this? Can you give me that? Can you give me and you don't have to say no. No one asks you. We're just living there and holding every day on an absolute level. It makes you closer to the soft church. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So don't think you get all stuck free. And then if we, if we think that we're holding tantric vows and we know how to do some rituals and we know how to do some pujas and um, we, can, we can do this and we can do that, you know, if we think that, we can do this and this and this and that and that. And then you can do rituals, you can do pujas, you can translate, you can write, you can read, you can do dharma sales, you know, you, you, you can do all these things. It's wonderful. So remember something. It's like drawing a glass of water. Let me give you another example. Our previous lives in the karma we have accumulated is like the Pacific Ocean. From California all the way to China. From the north all the way from the uh, North Arctic to the South Arctic. Antarctica. That huge body of water and in the center this water is so deep and so much that people have not penetrated the depths yet because the pressure is too much and it's very dark and deep. That kind of karma, and that's just very basic, okay? It's what we've accumulated in name from the karma previous life. And I'll tell you why. How you can check is you check your money. How often does it abide in self cherishing on a very absolute level and on a fundamental level on negative levels? Hmm. They're wrong, I'm not. You check. So if your thoughts are more towards the negative, you're more selfish, you're more greedy, you're calculative, you know, you're, you're angersome. And you can't control your, your, your negative body, speech, and mind. You can't control. That proves to you that your ocean may be double or triple. And then you do a little bit of sauna, just a little bit of sauna, a little bit of writing for Rukhi, a little bit. And even that little bit took so much coaxing. And your little bit of prayers, and your little bit of cheap retreats, you know, a little bit of cheap mantra, and then once a year, maybe you do your sadhana, because your, your guru is nice to you, and you decide to do it. That is just one little cup of merit. Then you, you pour into the black ocean. How do you expect it to become white in there? And that's what we do every day. So if you live for, you know, 67 years, every single day, that's maybe, you know, one million cups of water. I don't know. I'm just an estimation, you know. Do you think that's going to make the ocean wide. No, that's how much we do. And even what we do for the Dharma is staying by the eight worldly faults of high recognition. The eight worldly Dharmas. So, why do you, what do you think will happen to all of us? What do you think? A Lama or a Guru is likened to a butter lamp in the dark, in a windy room. Please stay awake. One more time, I'll ask you to go sleep. It's very bad karma for you, very bad. Don't increase it. Stay awake. A llama is like a butter lamp. Chim it in a room that's very, very windy. What does that mean to you? A candle in the room. That's how a llama is for us. For some of us who have 50 verses of Guru devotion, a llama is like a blowtorch in a room with wind. For a person who actually surrenders himself to the llama, surrender means what? They keep their body, I just do anything you want. You know, you can, you can, you can kill me or whatever, but if they don't let go of the ego, that's not surrender. That's not surrender. Living near the Lama, you can even live in the Lama's house and you can give everything, you do everything, you give all your money to him, you can give your body, you can give everything. But if you just surrender to self cherish your mind, you have not surrendered to your Lama at all. Surrendering to the Lama is on many levels, but on the fundamental level is 
You see you need it, she grew it in herself. When you surrender. When you haven't surrendered, you just go down, 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 down. One, two, on an absolute level. When you surrender to the Lama, on the absolute level, listen carefully. You surrender to the real Lama and find yourself cherishing on the Why? The vows become that with the You see, you don't live by the vows. You live breaking the vows to people's eyes. Why? You see, in Lama Yeshi said, if you look at Santa, you break the vows not by action and not by object, by intent. Oh, yes. Breaking a vow, that's why breaking a vow is not action or object. It is intent. So monks who wear beautiful clothes, you know, robes, they action, wonderful, blah, 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 blah. And everything is perfect on the outside. But they steal. And their intent is to steal. Everything is perfect, but they, they're not a monk anymore. They're not a monk. A monk can steal. They run in, you know, during a war they go and steal money and bread and bring it back to the community to eat. But their intent is not to steal. It doesn't harm people. It is this world. It is not the object. It is not the object. It is not the action. It is the intent. It's very important to know. So on an absolute level, people like Mahasitas, and I'm giving you an idea, they do everything opposite of conventions. Not because they're there to break conventions or flout them. It's that we are not operating on an absolute level. We are the ones who are wrong and not right. We are the ones who don't do things correctly. So to to us, they look wrong. Why? There are, thank you. There are very few people who operate on the absolute. Level. 